So here they are, powered bookshelf speakers from Klipsch known as the Fives. And I guess I should break that down a little bit. This size class is known as bookshelf speakers within the industry, and these are powered, which means that you won't need an integrated amplifier or AV receiver to send power to these speakers. They come with a power cable that you plug into the back of the speaker and into the wall, the amplifiers turn on and you can hear sound. But they also come with things like this HDMI cable so you can connect them to your television and uh, you can connect them to a turntable, a computer through a USB-A to USB-B connection. They come with that cable and also they have Bluetooth. So once you connect your source device, you can turn them on and you can listen to your music, watch television, whatever you need the speakers for. So that is a definite plus. Now let's move on and talk about the fives. As you can see here and with those photos that I showed in the intro, they have a nice retro design to them. And I think the name the fives also is quite retro. It kind of reminds me of a boy group from the 60s, like the Temptations or the Five Heartbeats or something like that. And they're kind of doing their thing. The fives, I really like it. I think it's a great name for these speakers. But before we get too far into this video, if you want to purchase the fives or anything else from Clips, like the sixes, maybe a pair of bookshelf speakers, floor standing speakers, whatever, use those links in the description below. Also, if you enjoy product reviews, unboxings, talk about streaming media, and basically all things home theater, why don't you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can be alerted anytime we upload new videos. Now let's talk about the design. I have the black surface finish. These are wood veneer surface finishes. They come in black, but they also come in walnut. From the pictures I've seen online, I think the walnut probably looks better, but this black looks great as well. And let's talk about this speaker. This is known as the primary speaker and this is the secondary speaker. This is primary because on top it has two control knobs. The first is the volume knob, so you just roll it back and forth, you can turn the volume up and down. And on the front of that is an input selection knob that you just turn and you select your different inputs. So that's definitely cool. And it's kind of an unbalanced look. And again, it's retro, it's machined aluminum or some other machined metal up top. And I like it, I think it looks really nice. Now moving on to the front of the speaker, this is where I think the design aesthetic really comes in and that's with these grills. This is a brown grill with some black and white accents in it and I think it gives the speaker an overall nice two-tone appearance and I really, really like these grills. On the bottom is the Klipsch logo right down there and again, it's got this uh, sort of font that I like. I think it looks really retro and cool. But to pull the grills off, you just give them a little tug and they come off because they are attached via magnets. So you can see the magnets are here and down here and this frame is nice and sturdy it's not really going anywhere now the grill itself i think is some form of plastic it's not cloth but it looks good and i didn't notice any sonic differences when i had the grills on versus off during my testing now that the grill is off you can see the tweeter and woofer down there at the bottom the tweeter is a one inch titanium dome tweeter and it is surrounded by the eclipse horn that's something that Klipsch is known for. And at the bottom of the horn right there is the Klipsch logo, it has the same font as the grill, so I think that looks pretty cool. Down there at the bottom is a four and a half inch woofer that handles the mid-range and bass for this unit. The speakers have a frequency response from 50 hertz to 25,000 hertz, but they will drop down to 46 hertz at 35% volume with dynamic bass extension turned on. One other thing I should mention on the primary speaker is right there is what looks like a little LED light, but it's not a light, it's actually an IR receiver for the remote because this does come with an included remote and the remote itself is fairly small and it feels pretty good in the hands. I don't have any issues with the remote. Up top you have a power button, a play pause button, so you can play and pause Bluetooth music when you're playing Bluetooth. You also have your volume uh, up and down here with a mute in the center and a subwoofer volume uh, on the right and the left right there. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And just below that are all the input sources such as TV, Bluetooth, um, auxiliary, optical, USB, that kind of thing. So you can select uh, whichever source that you want with the remote. You don't necessarily have to use any of the knobs up front or up top. Now let's talk about the rear of these speakers. The first thing you notice is they are both ported on the top to allow for better bass performance, but they do not come with port plugs, so you will need to keep these, I don't know, five or six inches away from the wall to get the best bass performance. On the secondary speaker, which is here on the far left, just below that you have the model name, 
number and just different information on this sticker and the serial number is down there on the bottom that's the white sticker but just above that serial number is the connection between these two speakers you have to connect the two speakers so you get signal to the secondary speaker from the primary speaker the speaker wire or the speaker cable that they give you is about 13 feet long and it actually connects very securely because you plug it in and you screw it in Moving on to the primary speaker, all the connections are here, so we're gonna spend a little bit of time here. The first connection I'm happy to see is this HDMI port. It's actually HDMI with ARC, which is audio return channel, and CEC, which is consumer electronics control. And if you have the correct cable, which one comes in the box, and a compatible television, what this allows you to do is connect HDMI to your TV and get the audio from your TV through these speakers and you can use your TV's remote control to control the volume, which is a nice feature. Just make sure that your TV has HDMI ARC uh, connection on the back of it, and also check your user's manual to make sure you have everything connected correctly. Now the connection next to that is a service connection that can be used for a service if you have an authorized service provider. There's nothing that I use this for, but if you have to service it, it's there. Next to that is a little switch that I wanna talk about in a minute. I really like this switch. And then there is a button to pair the Bluetooth so you can pair it to your phone or your tablet. Now down here is the RCA connection for a turntable or you know any kind of RCA connection that you may need. It also has a ground connection for a turntable so you can ground out your turntable. So that's definitely important. Right here's a little switch that flips up and down for line or phono input so you can kind of turn the preamp on or off and that's pretty cool and needed. There's also an aux connection here so you can connect a three and a half millimeter connection and again play from whatever three and a half millimeter source that you have. Next there is a sub out connection so you can connect a subwoofer to this to play those deep notes because as I said the frequency response drops to about 46 hertz in specific situations so if you want to play lower than that you need a subwoofer and I did try this and it works and I'll talk about that a little bit in the sound quality section. And the final two connections are digital optical, so you can use an optical cable, and a USB-B connection, so you can connect these to your computer and listen to music on your computer. So Klipsch basically has us covered with all the major connection types for today's world, which is a definite plus. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is this little switch up here, this primary LR switch. Like I said, this is the primary speaker, but sometimes you have to hook the primary speaker up on one side or the other side of your computer because the outlets there are all the connections there. So now what Klipsch has done is they've included this switch to make this the left or the right speaker, and I love that feature. On my TV, I had to plug it up on the right-hand side because that's where my HDMI connection was, but when I connected it to my computer, I had to go to the left-hand side because that's where the outlet was, and I could just flip the switch, and then all of a sudden I've got left hand where it's supposed to be and right hand or whatever. So it was very nice, and I like that Klipsch added that in. So now we're done with the design and I wanna talk about sound quality and my experience after playing with these for about two weeks. And I'm going to do that in a few different categories. I'm actually gonna rank these. I'm gonna rank them from one to five. One being the absolute worst and five being the absolute best. But before I do that, I'm going to play an audio sample just so you can hear that these do make sound. We're gonna start with design and I give these a five out of five. I like the retro look of these speakers. They look fantastic. Klipsch has done a great job with the overall surface finish. You get the black and the walnut, but where this really shines is in the grills. The grills are a different color and it gives it a nice two-tone look. In the blacks, you've got this mainly light brown, but it's got some white and black accents uh, on the grill. And again, that two-tone look makes it really pop. And I found that I actually wanted to just always leave the grills on because I like that look. Also on the grill, they put this Klipsch logo down here at the bottom right corner. And the font that they use is a nice retro future look. And what I mean by that is if you guys remember the uh, cartoon series, The Jetsons, I think it started in like the 1950s, 1960s. And it was about a family that lived in the future. They drove around in flying cars. But this font is one of those uh, fonts that 
would have fit very well in that particular show and that's why I think it just really goes with this overall package. I also like the fact that it has the control knobs, both the volume and input selection on the top of the speaker in this brushed metal surface finish. I really like it because the secondary speaker doesn't have that and so it's kind of a little bit off balance, a little bit kind of different and again I like it because it fits very well with this speaker. So from a design standpoint I have to give these a 5 out of 5. The next category is features and controls and I give this again a 5 out of 5. I was a little bit hesitant at first because again the control knob is up here up top and so it could be a little bit hard to get to but they give you this remote to make it just a little bit easier so again I've got to give it a 5. Now it has all the connections and controls that you could basically need for a pair of bookshelf speakers on the back including HDMI with ARC and CEC so again you can turn on your TV these will come on and you can control the volume with your television remote so that is a definite plus also the turntable input with the ground you've got the USB input so you can connect to your computer Bluetooth and honestly the feature that I like the most is that little switch back there that you can switch from left to right on the primary speaker so your primary speaker can sit either on the left side or the right side depending on where your connections are and that is a definite plus and I wish more and more manufacturers would do that with their speakers so from a features and control standpoint again I give it a five now let's talk about that all-important category sound quality and I give these a four and a half out of five I really enjoyed listening to music and watching movies with these speakers and uh, let's start with the music First and foremost, it is a little bit of a warm presentation and it's nice and laid back, but I found it to be extremely engaging, which is what I want whenever I'm listening to music from a pair of speakers. I want them to be engaging and this gave me that engagement. When the highs came in, the tweeter did a good job giving nice detail with a clean, crisp, clear sound but it wasn't harsh. You could listen to classical music for hours and not feel fatigue and I'm happy to say that. The bass presentation was also nice since it goes down to 40 hertz, so you get nice bass whenever you listen to bass heavy music, so that is a definite plus. Moving on to movies, I found these to be engaging as well. One of the things I like about having bookshelf speakers like these is you can place them a bit wider and get a much wider soundstage, but yet have vocals still nice and centered if you tow them in. So that is a definite plus. And because of that, I do prefer these speakers over a standard two channel sound bar because you can get a wider soundstage and you'll also get more depth and even a bit more height to the image. Now comparing these to let's say a Dolby Atmos sound bar with side surrounds, I probably go Dolby Atmos sound bar. But from two channel to two channel aspect, I would definitely go with these. Another addition or another a thing I like about these speakers is that they have a subwoofer output because the bass is good when you're listening to music but honestly I wanted a bit more bass when I was watching action movies um, so a dedicated sub would definitely do that and I did try it with the SVS PB1000 and it does blend quite well with that subwoofer. Uh, about a year ago I had the Klipsch SPL100 which is another 10 inch subwoofer and I don't have it anymore but I do believe that would blend quite well with these speakers if you got that. So I can recommend that. So overall, I think these do a great job and I give them a four and a half out of five. I wish they had a little bit more bass presentation uh, when watching movies, but when listening to music, the bass is definitely there. They're definitely engaging, which is a plus in my book. So I give them a four and a half out of five. The final category is value and I give these a four out of five. These are $799 for the pair so they're a little expensive but you get an excellent design and all the connections that we need including a turntable computer connection bluetooth and hdmi with arc and cec so if you have a television that supports it you can just use your remote to change the volume and they also give you a sub volume here so they give you basically everything you need so for those reasons i give it a four out of five Overall, I highly recommend the fives from Clips. I'm gonna say it one more time. These look fantastic. They also have all the features and controls that we need for a modern entertainment system, and they sound good as well. I found them to be very engaging. Now again, I do recommend a subwoofer if you're gonna use these for a movie watching situation, especially with action movies, but otherwise they do a great job. If you wanna purchase the fives or anything else from Klipsch, use those links in the description below. They do help support the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. We'll talk to you next time.